I think drawing from life with the subject right in front of your eyes is one of the most valuable things you can do for your learning. There's just something about your subject being right in front of you. You can't get any more real than that. Colors, shapes, edges are all going straight from your subject and into your eyes, with no camera translating the information in between. And I think there's real value in that. For example, I realized how much richer in color all skin tones were when I started working from life. Photos can often wash them out. Also from life, you can invent your own rhythms. Being able to move around the subject for yourself allows you to find the most inspiring, rhythmic view. There's also more information you get about the perspective and the 3D quality of objects, since you can move left to right around your subject, seeing in real life how it turns in space. It can be uncomfortable to get out of the house, though, and draw in front of people. You can feel vulnerable. But once I get going and get into the drawing, I'm always happy I took the chance. With a simple Google search, you should be able to find drawing groups and open studios in your area. Community colleges also offer this type of class 9 credit if you'd like some instruction to go along with it. If you don't want to join a group, though, life is all around you, and you can create still life setups at home. Geometric forms are great to study, and you can buy these on Amazon. I painted mine gray instead of the wood that they came with. You can even paint them different values, though, and use them for value and form studies. If you're perhaps a portrait artist, you might like working from objects which are portrait-specific. Studying the skull and the planes of the head are excellent ways to learn. You can set up still lifes, work from life outdoors, or if your cat's really good at posing like mine is, you can draw them. Draw from whatever subjects inspire you. Here are some quick tips for measuring while working from life. Imagine a flat plane in front of your face, almost like a clear pane of glass, parallel to the vertical plane of your face. In sighting angles, you'll want to keep your measuring stick flat against this imaginary plane. If you poke through the plane, this will distort your measurements. You can use a straight edge like a skewer to sight angles. So with a locked arm, and your skewer flat against the imaginary plane and not poking through, you can see angles and compare them to your drawing. This is easiest if you're working on an easel and you can compare your drawing directly to the subject. You can also make measurements with the point of your skewer and your thumb, and you can compare those measurements to others on your subject. So here I'm seeing the corner of the eye to the bottom of the chin is about the same length from eye socket edge to eye socket edge here. And I can compare that measurement to areas on the skull as well. Then I can see if my drawing has captured those same relationships. Now let's run through a couple life drawings together and I'll try and explain my thinking while I worked. Here on this cube, the first thing I tried to do was work out the cube in perspective thinking about where the parallel lines would appear to converge to. Then I block in the major colors of the light, the halftone, and the form shadow, as well as the background color and the cast shadow color. Then I blur some of the edges with the smudge tool, take a second look and clean up the perspective, and the simple study is finished. It took just around 15 minutes to draw, but was a good little study for lighting, values, and perspective. So this next piece I did over the course of three sessions. I missed drawing and painting the portrait from life, so I went to an art class in my area. Lots of artists were there and we worked around the live model together. This class was especially great because it was held by an awesome teacher who could come around and give me great ideas on what I could focus on. It's nice to get out of your own head sometimes and allow someone else whose works you admire and respect to come alongside and give you guidance. The first thing I did was create a rough sketch where I laid in the shapes, general angles, and some of the rhythms of my subject. I also added a little color palette with my first impressions of the main colors. Then I moved on, thinking through the form, attempting to construct the forms of the head. With digital mediums, it's nice because you can be very sketchy as you find your way through your drawing, and then simply lower the opacity of the layer when you need to, and add a cleaner line art layer on top. But you can't do this in traditional drawing. What you can do, though, is you can be very expressive, and then once you're done, trace your sketch over to a nice clean sheet of paper. 
Just be sure to transfer over your best expressive lines to the final drawing too. Continuing on, looking at the negative space helps me draw her better, as does dropping imaginary horizontal and vertical lines to help me see where things fall. Now I'm making a quick color study. We haven't covered this in this class since it's about drawing, but you can work in black and white and take it as a study for values. Continuing work on the drawing, I add a tone to her hair because I want to see the values as I see them in real life. She had dark hair, so this helps me see that shape better than just an outline did alone. Now I've made both my drawing layer and my color layers visible, so I can start working up both parts at once. This isn't how I typically work, but I like how the sketchiness of both were able to come together. That's what's fun about life drawing too. Lots of room to experiment and try new processes and ways of tackling things. And also, what you learn from the teacher and students around you is a great benefit too. Now I'm thinking most in terms of value, color, forms, and edges. Some of this is outside what we've talked about in this drawing class, but I do cover all these elements in my other classes if you're interested in learning more with me. I'm trying to think things like, okay, how do these stripes on her shirt curve around the form from front to back? How does the forehead turn away from me? How light is this value? How dark is this one? It's all about comparing and contrasting. I feel I spent about the same amount of time observing the subject and seeking to understand what's happening as I did looking at my screen and actually drawing. So keep that in mind. Keep your eyes on your subject and observe. I can't wait to see if you're up for the challenge of drawing from life. If you set something up at home, try a one light setup. Set your subject up by a window with natural light coming in or set up under one electric light source. 